Hi everyone, welcome back to A Sky Full of Stars, Hikari's Route, Episode 6. So right now, we're at this stargazing party, and Hikari just gave a really big speech to all the participants. So most of the people from town, people that run businesses, and she got a really elaborate expression about the purpose, the nature, and the reason for Product Starlight. So the fact that, well, when I was young, the sky is perfect black, I can see all these stars in the sky, but now that we're older, the town is more developed, there are more lights at night, and it's blocking our view. So if we can have everyone turn off these lights for a short bit of time, we can see this perfect black sky with all the constellations again. And it makes sense because on this day, so December 14th, there is going to be a meteor shower and that's a special opportunity for all of us to see. But one big problem so far is that Hikari got into a fight with Saya and Saya has declined to show up at the Six Stars Club and even Sao Tome's Stop by Convenience Store. And the fight got worse to the point where Hikari and Saya are calling each other by their last names, so Hokiboshi-san and Amanagawa-san. And I know Akito wants to find a way to get Hikari and Saya to make up, but now is not the appropriate time. So let's see how it goes from here and what Morita's question is. Okay, so what is it? So everyone is confused by Morita-san's question. So did he not pay attention? えっと、そう思います。だって、こんなにも綺麗なのに。街の明かりが外であるかのようにおっしゃいましたが、あなた方もその豊かさを享受しているはずです。都合の良い時だけ悪者扱いするのはいかがなものかと思いますが。そう、
So at Honoka's signal, the first years pass out the papers to everyone, and the momentary tense air departs, and the peaceful atmosphere returns. And so the night stargazing ends. Well, I don't know if we did well or not, but I thought that Hikari had gotten the point across pretty well. But the bigger question is that: Did they take the consideration into your heart? So I had been looking at my reflection in the glass from a different angle, fixing the sleeves of my jacket and my hair. So Kotaro has been wagging his tail like he wanted to play, but when he understood I would not play with him, he just looked, took a nap in his doghouse. Well. That scarf is kind of dorky. It was a scarf I always wore, but it wasn't very fashionable design. But I don't have another one, and it's too cold for no scarf. Hmm. And I wonder why Miharu is upset. I met Miharu-san's eyes in the store through the glass, and she is really glaring at me. Uh oh. So I pretend not to notice and avert my eyes, and then the train slides into the station. So after a short wait, a girl appears from the ticket gate, and I'm sure we know who this person is. Akita. Um,、uh, Hikari. Okay, so that's why Miharu Sensei is upset. Like, oh, so he's trying to look good for a girl. That means he has a girlfriend and is going to go on a date versus me, this teacher who is all gloomy and working ungratefully at my parents' store. So seeing me in front of the store, he carry waves and runs over. So he carry yells out something like the name of a move as she jumps onto me, and I somehow manage to catch her. You're cold. She says this while hugging me, arms and all, from the slide. Or from the side. So it's cold that day. The forecast had been calling for temperatures close to zero. Well, I'm cold. She drilled her head into my shoulder while speaking in a begging voice. Uh, okay, there. They're all good. I held Hikari to warm her up. Well, you're soft, Hikari. I could feel how squishy she is even through the coat. Hey, so you're implying that I'm fat? I don't mind that the fat part is her chest. Oh, I can't believe it. They're trying to put on an act for me. Hmm. So what's wrong? I kind of felt a chill just now. So he knows me hard teachers watching them. No, no. Um, I feel fine. I think I just felt the malice of someone who doesn't want to celebrate other people's happiness. And the source of was on the other side of the glass.、Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> so wanting Hikari to play with him, Kotaro comes out of his house with his tail wagging. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I can't do it today. Ah. Alright, let's see what Hikari says. Okay. Oh, so the bus is here. So Hikari stops hugging me and logs or jogs to the bus stop. 
and I follow after her. So that's right. We had a date today. So where are they going? So it's been a while since I've been on this rally, this rally old bus from Mikazuki Station. I can see the ocean from the window of the bus as it follows the main road. So we came to the ocean side of Hoshinaka City. Oh, so the ocean, it's huge. And the huge body of water that filled our entire vision impressed us. So the old Mikazuki village was in the mountains, so we only ever swam in rivers. And it wasn't the first time I had seen the ocean, but since I was a working student, it had been quite a while. <laughs> so wait, what was that for? <laughs> so she petted my head for some reason. So Amahai, where Hikari went to school, was next to the ocean, and the train she rode to Mikazuki Station ran by the ocean for a while. And she had lived in a South Asian country until last month, and it seems she lives by the ocean. Wait, so no call man cute. Hi, hi. Okay, you're not cute. She rubs my head even harder. She wasn't flattering me. She really thought I am cute. Well, I kind of don't get it, but let's see, was kind of happy. So as we were doing that, the bus arrived at its destination. Hmm, so this is the trendy place I've heard about. And you can hear from the audio that there's so many so many people here. Oh, so we're in Harbor Town. So it looks all nice, it looks modern and stylish compared to the Mikazuki Village Station that Akito has been in his whole life. So it was a holiday and Harbor Town is crowded. Okay, that makes sense. So many people are waiting to and fro on the road, which was closed off to cars. Or so they're walking. So in, in Mikazuki Village, you never see this many people, even on a national holiday. So you've been here before, right, Hikari? So I thought she'd been here with Saya before. And they told me about Harbor Town after they came back, but I didn't think I'd ever come, so I didn't really listen. So it was an open mall that is famous locally and even drew people from outside Hoshinaka. It was kind of an adult dating spot. So it's fashionable and popular with local girls, but sort of a high hurdle for students. Hmm. So, where should we go first? A wide avenue uh, stretched between buildings built to look like a foreign port town. So both sides are lined up with shops and there is even a street stalls that sold crepes and ice cream. Uh, so let's go to the clothing store. Um, it kind of stands out. As I chose a destination at random, Hikari pulls on my arm. So, it's probably an upscale clothing store and everything inside is expensive. So, um, I think we should pass. Well, now that she said it, it did... So now that she said it, I didn't recognize that logo. 
Well, I was not expecting us to go to this expensive clothes store wearing brand name clothing. So Hikari said this and walked in front of me. So as I thought, girls are best at this kind of thing. And even so, I thought if girls from my school came to Harbor Town for the first time, they would be overwhelmed. So I feel like you are used to this place, Hikari. What do you mean? Well, used to places like this. So you're the real Ama High student. So Ama High is in the most modern, modern part of Hoshinaka City, and is known for its modern designs of the buildings and uniforms. Really? So I can't believe you are the same Hikari I went swimming in the river with. Wait, what do you mean? Uh, wait, no way. So I only met her around Mikazuki Village since we reunited, and I hadn't noticed. So from when she moved until now, Hikari had grown up into a different place. Or in, in a different place. And I was really feeling the time we had spent apart. So I held Hikari's hand without speaking. Okay. Hmm. So, the other couples are doing it. So we should do the same thing too. So the majority of the other couples in the area are all holding hands. Well, I guess so. I didn't like Hikari taking the lead so much, so I tried to just act like everyone else. But Hikari blushed and stopped. So wait, what are you embarrassed about? So, didn't you hug me when you showed up? Well, I'm sure here there's more people, so it's kind of hard to be holding hands without not getting attention. Well, that was true. Hikari mumbles happily when she entwined our fingers. So our hands could not get any closer. So, sh shall we go? Hikari nods shyly as she held my hand and we started walking together. So we were taken by the adult atmosphere of the shopping mall we were only awkward at best. So I wonder where they're going to go now. So once we got used to it, we were able to enjoy the atmosphere. Well, we didn't come to shop. We only came to walk and hold hands. Okay. So everything else is just extra. And when I realized this, I stopped worrying about picking up items I wasn't going to buy and peeking in the brand store windows that I could not afford. So all the fashionable shops and the foreign feeling of the place was like walking through a theme park. Okay, well, so I think they ate something and it's hot for Akito. There you go. So they are eating something. Um, well, if it's okay. So I was eating Italian style takoyaki while we walked. And it was at a street stall and it looked interesting and I wanted something warm so I bought it. So is it good? Yep. I was thinking, well, what are they doing making takoyaki Italian? But it wasn't bad af after all. 
私も食べよっとああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああああ That is a vegetable they didn't have at the Mikazuki supermarket. Hi, ah, ah, and even while we ate Italian takoyaki, we never stopped holding hands. And since we each inevitably only had one free hand, I held takoyaki box and Hikari held the toothpick to feed me. And it was an annoying way to eat. Well, it's a romantic way to eat. Man, this is good. <laughs> it was more. Or it was nice eating hot takoyaki in the cold, but my first taste of Italian and this unusual way to eat doubled my feeling of happiness. Okay, Hikari, your turn. <laughs> Or、um, more seconds. I'm hungry, but I also wanted Hikari to feed me. I could never show this love struck face to Takeichi or Miharu sensei. So, with warmth and happiness between our teeth, we heard the rhythm of drums from across the way. Wait, so what's that? Um, a parade? A group of people dressed in circus performing performers walk down the street playing drums and other instruments. Wait, it's a、um, harbor coon. Wait, so what do you mean harbor coon? So a big mascot stood out in the middle of the performers. And it looks like a seabird on a boat. It's handing out balloons to the kids that gathered around it. Is Hikari too old for a balloon? Wait, so why don't you get one? Well, I look bad because I'm too old for a balloon. It's for little kids. Unfortunately, both her hands are occupied. Oh, so I have no hands to hold one. She could have let go of my hand for a minute, but that would make me lose to Harbor Coon, so I did not suggest it. So Ikari stuck the toothpick in a Harbor Coon. In a Italian takoyaki, and then pulled me by the arm over to Harbor King. So let's go over there as a couple. Here you go, says Harbor King. Wait, he talks? I thought mascots like that usually dis- just dance and wave without talking. Well, that's the case if you're talking about Disney mascots. The ones that walk around in Disney theme parks. So, Harbor Boy gave Hikari a balloon and a pamphlet. So, um, here, go to the planetarium. There's this show that's going on. So, Harbor Ku waved to us and continued on with the performers. So he was plugging the planetarium. So they're pretty serious about it. So they really want people to attend. So he said that, but we headed to the planetarium anyways. So the main event of our date is going to the planetarium, and that's why we had to come to Harbor Town. Well, there are a lot of people here. 
but we probably would not get permission. Well, I want to wear one someday. She says this thrusting the balloon at me. So why don't you get a part-time job doing that? So Ikari looks over the pamphlet she got from Harbor Coon Lost in Thought. And on it, written the program for the planetarium we are going to with the explanation of the diamond of the winter sky. Hmm, so it looks interesting. I came without really researching what it was about, but I thought it looks good. Hmm, so we have a little while before it starts, so what should we do? So let's eat more food. Hikari points to the crepe shop with a grin. So after eating our snacks and peeking into the bookstore and the general store, we head towards the planetarium. So now it's time for the show. So we enter the dome-shaped building on the outskirts of Harbor Town. Okay, so they're now inside. Wow, it's beautiful. So, it was silent inside, and the tone of my voice naturally lowered. Well, I said it's fine, so it's not much. Hikari's worried about me paying the entry fee. Well, it's fine. So, I have a job. But I'm sure Akira doesn't get paid that much, and Hikari knows it. Well, my rent is cheap, and food is included. But I'm sure still it's not enough to for Akito. So I'm able to save a little every month. And plus, I'm worried that you're getting too close to the Saotomes. And it really does seem like the mother Saotome wants you to be married to teacher Miharu. And it's a way to get Miharu to move on out of the lonely life of being a neat person. Hikari says this while taking my arm. Well, I already mentioned I had a girlfriend to the manager, and I thought it was fine. So Hikari shouldn't worry that much. Okay, so you pay for dinner later then. So there is a restaurant on the way here. Oh, it's she checks her wallet while mumbling something about money. She's like, wait, that's expensive. Ha ha ha, I'm kidding, don't worry about it, I'm your boyfriend. Okay. Hikari smiles shyly for some reason. Really? Well, thanks. So what had I done that was so cool? Well, I think a lot of things. But you know, it's kind of bad that you're paying all this because I'm a girl and it's always the guy that brings out the money. Alright, fine. So it seemed important to her, so I accepted it instantly. So we arrive at the seats the attendant directed us to. And the seats 
are non-reservation, but depending on the day's theme, it was easier to see from certain seats. So the clerk was directing people. It's like, okay, so you should stay here. This is a good place to watch the show. Yeah, it's more popular than I thought. The planetarium is almost full. I didn't know how many people or how many seats are there, but the dome is spacious. And in the center, a strangely shaped projector sat quietly, like it could release a laser beam from a retro sci-fi movie. And it's a pretty old projector for a planetarium that had been built a year ago. So they inherited this. Hikari read the information from the projector, or the pamphlet she got from Harbor Coon. So it's an old projector made in the former East Germany. Well, it is not a digital projector. And there are many types of planetarium projectors. So digital projectors display images on the circular dome screen, and you can also play normal movies instead of the stars. Well, a dome theater is pretty nice because you get this whole field vision. Like you get this whole view, or like you're surrounded by the movie. And the best example I could think of is like the IMAX dome theaters. So you get this really big dome that's powered by a really big projector. And on top of that, you get this really nice sound system that comes with IMAX. So digital projectors, planetariums were kind of like dome-shaped cinemas. But this projector is an analog opt optical type. It uses gears to change through different configurations of stars. And I thought that the digital types, which could display CG images, were better for a date spot. Well, I'm sure this one has its, its charm as well. But for the beauty of the displayed stars, these optical types could not be beaten. And the historic feeling of the shadow, dull light of the old projectors could not be ignored. I'm sure the light looks more authentic from this old projector. The stars, they look more authentic. They glow. So there is a strange anticipation of wanting to see the beautiful stars displayed on the projector. So the voice rang out in the dorm. Or the dome. And surprisingly, it was live narration and not a recording. Okay, that's good. So a live voice echoes gently in the half sphere. Like a tide going out, the guests went quiet. And the feeling of the audience didn't seem like nervousness. It was more like anticipation for the show. And I think that we all felt comfort with a person running the show rather than a machine. So the lights become dim. The skyline of Hoshinonaka City is drawn on a silhouette on the dome's edge and the sun appears high in the sky. So time sped up, the sun moved across the sky of the dome and finally sank below the horizon. And even twilight was replicated, the sky turning a vivid orange.
目を閉じてくださいなんで目を閉じるんだろう So why close our eyes? I don't know. So, still certain we close our eyes as we are asked to. よろしいでしょうかでは、そのまま少しの間、お待ちください。So, the light I could feel through my eyelids went out and night. Has come to the dome. So, were the stars out already? I wanted to say, but the sign to open our eyes just would not come. It did look an old, it did look an old projector. Was it taking time to change from day to night? I waited, thinking that. If that was the case, then this wasn't what I'm hoping for. Okay, so this is what Akito and Hikari s e e s So, the moment I open my eyes, they are filled with countless lights. And the beauty of it left me dumbstruck for a moment. And I hear Hikari hold her breath next to me. I could hear the other guests similarly sighing and or holding their breath. So, it was to get our eyes used to the dark. She didn't ask us to close our eyes because it took time to change from day to night. So, so the surprise is part of the performance to show the audience the sky full of stars once their eyes were adjusted to the dark. And if we I waited with our eyes open for the change, we would have seen little stars little by little as our eyes adjusted with no breathtaking surprise. And due to the little performance, the audience is drawn into the beauty of the stars. So, sunset is at. So, that's like、um, 4 29 p.m. So. So, time sped up again, and the summer constellations sank beyond the western horizon. The autumn constellations followed, then down across the dome, and the stars of the winter sky rose instead. But even so, so what was the strange feeling I was having? Deja vu? And now, looking at it from the audience perspective, so feeling warmth in my hand. I see Hikari place her hand on mine. So it's too dark to see, but it seems that Hikari is as mesmerized as I was by the spectacular starry sky produced by the machine. So she probably was not putting her hand there because she missed the warmth of her boyfriend. Well, I'm sure she's feeling the same deja vu. As me. But I didn't know the source. Have we seen the same scene before somewhere? Well, I couldn't remember. It's irritating. Yoru, 
天空一の輝きを放つ大犬座のシリウスですそこから東側へ少し行ったところにあるのが子犬座のプロキオン So the voice led us through the first magnitude stars of winter, drawing a large diamond in the sky. And I knew these winter stars like the back of my hand. I had completely memorized them by heart. And since the time I had gone stargazing with Hikari and Saya, we had looked upon those jewels of the sky and. Had learned about them one by one. So, was that what deja vu means or it came from? However, I saw stars on any clear winter's night. They were sure pretty, but they had never given me a sense of deja vu before. Okay, so the Pleiades Cluster, where the Six Stars Club got its name from. So the narration barely reached my ears as it followed the Major winter constellations. The more beautiful the stars projected on the dome, the stronger my deja vu got, and I got more irritated that I did not know the source. I felt like I was forgetting something really important. ところで皆様、最初に星の中の今夜の空を。再現すると言いましたがそれは少し語弊があります星の配置は今夜のものですがもし皆様が外へ出て夜空を見上げてみても残念ながら星はこんな風には見えません市街の明かりにかき消されて小さな星はその姿を隠してしまうからです今皆様が見ている星空はおよそ20年前この場所から見えていた星空だったのです。OK。So squeeze harder。So finally arriving at the answer, I gripped Hikari's hand tightly. So it seems like Hikari had been thinking the same thing at the same time. So, this is the sky from before the time that the planetarium or even Harbor Town had been built. And they are the stars seen from the seaside when Hoshinaka City was still. Let's see. Oh, so it was still split into Hoshino City and Amanaka City. So, apparently, the cities grew so much that they bridged together and it became. Hoshinaka City. And not only that, they were. ほしあかりが闇夜を照らしているようでした。一つ一つの星たちは小さな小さな光です。目が闇に慣れていなければ見えないような。でもそんな小さな光が無数に集まれば、こんなにも明るい夜空になる。子供心に不思議に感じ、
heard Hikari's speech. The sky that's now spread before my very eyes. The narration said it's a sky from 20 years ago. So that sky is much brighter sky than the day Saya, Hikari, or I had seen. And without ever having seen it, this was a sky I had imagined when I thought about the sky that could be seen before. So lots of stars, and it looks very cluttered. Well, clutter is a bad word, but just lots of stars, and you can see even the dim ones. And that was the source of my déjà vu. However, the sky had really existed, well, no less than 20 years ago. So the dome suddenly seems to darken. So it's like, oh, okay, so that was the sky that you would see many years ago when the cities were still kind of small, but now with more lights, with a busy nightlife, this is what you see now. So it's much less brighter than before, and there's less stars. So had the stars above disappeared, those that remained dimmed, and the sky lost its beauty. A feeling of disappointment rose up from the seats around me. I could feel Hikari's feelings through her hand. The deary sky reminded me of the last grandeur. The stars lit up the sky again. The sky brightened and we felt unconsciously relieved. Hold on, went a little fast, so let's see what the narrator had to say. Okay. Okay. So Ikari and I memorized the countless lights produced by the projector. We tried to hold the beautiful bright sky in our minds so we would never forget it. Okay, so it looks like the presentation is over, and we can see that a lot of the things that the narrator was talking about, it kind of ties into Hikari's Product Starlight, and why Hikari wants Product Starlight to happen. And more importantly, it's good to see the actual starry sky instead of one that's being projected by a projector, even though it's an old one and it's more authentic than the new digital projectors. But anyways, so it was dark when we left the planetarium. So there is an astronomy museum attached to the planetarium and while we had been exploring the museum, it had gotten late. Hmm, so the exhibit is worth seeing, so I'm glad we came. So Ikari seems to be thinking of something since the presentation had ended. 
So she's looking ahead silently. So Harbor Town Night is a different world. And with the beautiful and colorful lights, it's very gorgeous. So it is the Christmas season. So not only Harbor Town, the shops in the town are also decorated with lights. And even though it is more than two weeks away, it's full of Christmas spirits. So the fact that there are no tacky decorations like Santa or trees gave it a distinguished feeling and it really adds to the sophisticated atmosphere. So Ikari stops and looks up at the sky. Yeah, so I can't really see stars at all. Well, not when it's this bright with all those lights. Sekari so whispers like a child, sad from a revived sad memory. I grabbed her hand and said this. Well, I'm convinced. So there is a reason for this product starlight. But will we be able to do it? Well, I'm sure we will. I mean, even at the stargazing yesterday, all the adults agree with you, Hikari. So they had promised to help and then raised our motivation more than ever. Because you spoke from the heart, Hikari. Well, I'm sure that everyone has understood our feelings about the stars we could see before. But Hikari's face fell. So, are you worried about something? And maybe she is thinking about Saya. So, Saya hadn't come to yesterday's stargazing. Well, I don't think Hikari is worried about Saya. It's like, well, Saya is a bad person. I don't care. She's more worried about her effectiveness at convincing people to join in on this Prague Starlight. So she says this looking at the light decorations. So they really are pretty. So I'm sure some people would like to have these lights on. So it's wrong. So this isn't like you, Hikari. Maybe she's thinking about what Morita Sons had said. So you're the best when you're jumping headlong into what you believe. Well, you can still be a kid, so we will back you up. Me and, uh... I'm sure he was going to say Saya. Well, I'm saying we have your back. But that's how we had always done things. So if your card does not go first, nothing would ever start. So what else? Hikari pulls a small paper bag from her pocket. And it's something she bought at the Planetarium Museum. So what is it? A keychain. And there's a picture of, let's see, Libra constellation on it. Oh, so you, you remember my birthday. My birthday is October 1st, and that means my zodiac sign is a... I think it's Libra or Libra. And I think... Okay, so Hikari has a keychain with her zodiac sign, 
which is which is Leo. So it's a lion, and then Libra or Libra is like a scale. So I thought they were kind of childish items for a bo- boyfriend girlfriend to have, but they suited us so well that I had to smile. <laughs> and there's still something in the museum shop bag. Ricardo didn't say about it, but I could imagine what it is. So it's probably a Capricorn keychain. Capricorn. So that's Saya's zodiac sign. So Hikari does want to make up a sight at some point, and it's like, well, once we're on better terms, I'll give her this Capricorn keychain. Hikari suddenly raises both her arms in the air while still holding my hand. Yeah, it's not long until the Gemini shower, meteor shower comes. If we could recreate the sky from the planetarium, the streaking meteors would fill the sky like rain. Well, of course, that would not be possible without the full cooperation of Oshinaka City. Hikari pronounced with renewed resolve. But before that, so dinner. Okay, dinner. Remembering her empty stomach, Hikari lowers her arms and wraps them around her stomach. Okay, so how about that restaurant? So the expensive restaurant. Um, that's that's too much money. I'm kidding. So let's not overdo it. Let's just get something we can afford. So with that decided, Hikari took my hand and pulled me towards a building with fast food restaurants. Okay, so eat cheap. So what's... so what's going on? So what's going on? I sink deep into the chair of the club room and put my smartphone on the desk with a sigh. So we are faced with a terrible decision. So should we cancel Product Starlight or should the Six Stars Club disband? And it had all started yesterday after school. So the problem is not what you said, but how you said it. So if things get too out of hand, then everything will have been for nothing. So I think the problem is that there is an argument that's brewing up among the different schools the different astronomy clubs. So I'm going to leave this part to the next episode and we're going to see what kind of pushed this argument along and how it started. And I think it's like, well, some people, or like Morita-san, he voiced his official disapproval of the Spark Starlight. And I think he's, he's insisting on this being cancelled. And... I think he's doing something to making it very difficult not to consider it. And that's probably what led to this argument. So, I'm not sure if Citizen Girls Academy is still part of the loop because 
Sai was the only person who is an astronomy type, and she has not been attending the club because of an argument with Hikari. So that's pretty much one school already out. And I'm not sure how the other schools are going to hold up. So, well, we know that Maurice Sunway is facing some problems, but what about Nishi, Meiko, Ama, and Akito's Hoshidaiji? But, anyways, with that in mind, I'll see you in the next episode.